We are gonna chip away at Mothberg. I've got tons of specimens in here and we gotta start chipping away at curating some of these valuable specimens. This is an Ello Sphinx that emerged from its pupa. We reared this and we're gonna save a reared specimen of the Ello Sphinx and mount it. This cup takes a lot of free freezer space. So we are gonna, we're gonna take this out, place it in our rehydration chamber and we're gonna try and mount this specimen. Here we go. Alrighty, here's our reared Ello Sphinx. We're gonna open up this cup. Now this, this was actually reared, this emerged like three months ago. So it could be a little brittle. So we gotta be really careful because if, when they've been in the freezer that long, the legs, the antenna, they can break very, very, very easily. But that's an immaculate specimen of the Ello Sphinx. And uh, believe it or not, they get rubbed pretty quick. When they start flying around, you know, they lose their scales and they can get rubbed real quick. So I like to have a few reared specimens of stuff if I can in my collection to show what the actual specimen looks like. So I'm just going to open this up. We're going to place our Ello moth female in here with some of her friends. We'll, <laughs> we'll come back in a, tomorrow in 24 hours and we'll, we'll go ahead and mount that specimen for you guys. We are going to mount this female Ello Sphinx. And so what, one of the first things we're going to do is we are going to get the wings placed behind the thorax. And what we do is like a lot of times what I'll do is I'll give the, when the, when the wings of a moth are resting over the top of the thorax like this, or like in its normal moth like position, you want the wings over the back because they're gonna go in the groove of this thing and you want them up so that you can place them down on top of the board. And it, it, it's a little, they're resting in this position for a while. So what I'll do is I'll take the my forceps, never with your fingers, but with forceps, and I will pinch the forceps or the thorax right where the forewings intersect or are connected to the thorax. And I'll give it a good pinch. And what that does is it loosens the muscles where the forewings or where the wings attach. And so as you can see, these wings are a lot more pliable now and a lot, they're a lot more willing to go where I want them to. But Sphinx moths guys are still a little bit tricky. So what we're gonna do, they're, they're very muscular. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to show you a trick. You may have seen me do this many times. I'm gonna grab my X-Acto knife. I'm going to cut the tendons on this moth and it will the, that will allow me to uh, maneuver the wings very much, a lot more free. So we start with the bottom wing and the moth abdomen or the moth thorax is really hairy or fuzzy, lots of scales. So it's tough to see, but you can tell where the vein of the wing, the hind wing, and then there's that little hook right there, uh, where that vein connects to the thorax, right under that is where that little tendon is. There it is, got it. But let me flip the wings over, do the other side. We need to snip the... Uh, One, two, all right. Okay, guys. And we have a board that's already pre-sized for the thorax. It's the appropriate size for this moth's thorax. I'm gonna cut some strips here. I love the Ello Sphinx, how it has that, that really cool 
different striking pattern from the forewing to the hindwing. Forewings, matte gray on the female. The males have like this black streak right here. But then this deep red coloration on the hindwing and then the, the black band. And of course, this abdomen has got this like rib cage looking thing. <laughs> Tell me that doesn't look like a rib cage. That is a really cool bug. All right, so now the this line is supposed to be somewhat straight across here. The bottom of the forewing come, comes across. I like to have my Sphinx Moth's wings propped up a little bit just because it shows off a little bit more of the hind wing. So it might be a little bit, a little bit of an angle on my Sphinx Moths, um, but that's just my personal preference. Then these two pins down here on the abdomen, I'll make a, a V underneath the abdomen and prop them up just like that. One of the things I always do is I always write with a, a micron pen uh, the date. Today is 11.15, just so I know when I put the specimen on the board because uh, it's got to stay on at least two weeks, especially these thick-bodied butterflies and moths like a, like a sphinx moth. He's got to stay on at least two weeks so that his bodily fluids dry out. If we take him off too early, when I take them off the board, the wings will droop down and it'll look like a like it wasn't done properly. So that's about it, guys. And we're gonna make a label. It was caught, I mean, sorry, it was emerged in uh, the third week of July this month, or this year, 2022. Um, larva was collected in June in Crocodile Lake National Wildlife Refuge. So we're going to make a label that states all of those facts according to the host plant uh, record. And this specimen will be deposited in the Florida State Collection of Arthropods in Gainesville, Florida. So uh, we've got plenty more bugs to come from where this comes from. In fact, here's a few of them. We're gonna mount the rest of these in other videos uh, as we curate our butterfly moth collection from the Florida Keys. And we're gonna move her over here to our specimen box. Guys, hope you liked the video. Our Ella Sphinx is done and ready for being put away in her specimen box. So uh, guys, hope you liked the video. Don't forget to subscribe. We've got plenty more cool bugs to talk about in future videos. So don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications so that you get notified every time we put out a, a cool video on the butterflies and moths of South Florida. Uh, here's for the yellow sphinx. Ciao guys, we'll talk to you next time. Bye now.